It's a homecoming 18 years in the making. Just hours after a DNA test concluded Stephen Avery was wrongfully convicted of sexual assault and attempted murder, he hugs family members and enjoys his first taste of champagne. That's the best taste I ever had in 18 years. Yeah, it tasted pretty good. Avery knew he was innocent, but he says for 18 years, attorneys always ran into roadblocks trying to vindicate him. Most of the attorneys I had, they said I was innocent, you know. And they went so far and, and just stopped. And boom, that was it. Back now to the Stephen Avery case, a DNA test proved his innocence and set him free. I spoke with State Attorney General Peg Lautenschlager about that and about her call today for a full Justice Department review into the Stephen Avery case. Attorney General Peg Lautenschlager, thanks very much for being here. It's a pleasure. Now, now first, I guess uh, I wanted to get your response to the fact that Stephen Avery was, in fact, found innocent and released from prison after the Attorney General's office uh, represented the prosecutors in, in the appeal of his case. Well, that's a standard practice for us. It's one, the issues on appeal had nothing to do with the conviction. You know, you have to remember that the conviction was done at a time when things like photo lineups and the like were available, but where DNA evidence testing really was not. Um, we have assigned uh, three attorneys, two from our public integrity unit, the two attorneys there, and one from our criminal uh, litigation division, a sex crimes ex expert, to um, help with that investigation. As well, we have investigators from our public integrity unit of our division of criminal investigation. Do you suppose then that uh there were some problems there. I mean, given the, what, what I know about the case now, um, it, it was based on, on a, an eyewitness account, you know, the victim, um, and, and it sounded as though the investigatory work, you know, didn't go far enough. Obviously, it didn't. Well, you have to remember, though, this was 1985, and indeed, uh, an eyewitness account was all they had. My whole life is gone. I don't know which way to go. For almost 18 years, Avery lived in a cell, falsely imprisoned for a rape he didn't commit. Avery does odd jobs to make what little money he can. The only financial assistance he's received so far is from a fund a Door County lawmaker set up on his behalf after news that Avery hadn't received any money from the state for his false imprisonment. And you were one of two DCI agents to work on an investigation involving the prosecution in 1985 of Stephen Avery, is that right? Yes. You and Deb tell the lawyers that it appears that there was no real investigation done by the Sheriff's Department and they had a suspect and they were going to make it work and that what's a little troubling to you is the lack of paperwork that's done and so forth. Well, that would have wrote that. Okay, but she's speaking for the two of you. Yes, I believe she was speaking for the two of us. And was that your opinion at the time? I, yeah, I think that was our opinion at the time. Kosorek tells you that he did not think that the Sheriff's Department knew who Gregory Allen was in 1985. Correct. That was inconsistent with Allen having been booked into the jail and photographed in 1984. Correct. So if the Sheriff had wanted to see a photo of Allen in 1985, all he had to do was go to his own jail and find it. Correct.
Have you seen this woman? An intense search is underway tonight for a missing 25-year-old from Calumet County. They're hoping to locate Teresa's car, which they say is a major key in their investigation. That car is a 1999 dark green Toyota RAV4, just like the one you see here. Hey, this is Detective Dave Remaker from the Sheriff's Department in Manitowoc. Uh -huh. um, we've got a, uh, a missing female um, adult. When I, when I went to death school, they had a presentation where some guys came in with some some uh, high-tech equipment, and um, they had the ability to ping a cell phone on, on, in an attempt to locate where a person was. Uh -huh. And uh, we've we've got kind of a it's kind of an unusual circumstance here with a possible suspect. And I thought I'd give it a shot and see what what DCI can do for us. County Sheriff's Department. Yes, my name is Deb Stoltz. I'm a special agent with the uh, Division of Criminal Investigation. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I'm calling is I've done some past investigations on Stephen Avery. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching the news and I'm seeing his name come up. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if there's anything I can offer to help you guys. And I, and I don't even know if this is within my realm of authority to even offer, but I just, I'm not a big fan of Steve Avery. If there's even something technical assist that our agency has that would benefit you guys. I can put you through to Investigator Wiegert's phone. He will be coming in tomorrow. That sounds fine. Okay. I just need to in good conscience that we pick up the phone and make the call. <laughs> okay, just right. one second. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of a change of plans here. The boss has got something he wants us to do. Okay, we are at Avery Salvage. We have found a RAV4. What color specifically was her RAV4? And do you have a VIN number? What color is it? It is bluish green. I can't find a VIN number. Can't find the VIN number. Isn't that funny? Well, here it is, Nick. The last four digits. Three zero four four. Okay, where are you? We can tell uh, you that, in fact, the vehicle of Ms. Halbach uh, was found. Uh, we have uh, obtained uh, uh, evidence. Hi, my name is Gary Freiberg. I'm with the Attorney General's Office in Manhattan. Yeah. Say, I got a call from Kim Skorlinski, who is the long story. Bottom line, I'd like Mark Roy, the DA's phone number, home phone number, or cell phone or whatever you can give me. This is concerning the missing woman. Okay, the, and your uh, first... stuff that they're trying to get done right now. Okay, right? and you're with... Attorney General's Office in Madison. Okay. I appreciate it called right away. I will get them a hold of them as soon as I can. Thank you very Bye much. Bye now. Bye-bye. Department. Right now we know Teresa Hallbach's car has been found, but the County Met County District Attorney is not saying what her status is, if she's still missing, or if her body has been discovered. Now the sheriff says the car was found at Avery's Auto Salvage. Uh, very little information is being released.
they accused you guys of not accepting that Steve was guilty, didn't they? Yes. They accused you of embarrassing yourselves by believing in your uncle, didn't they? Yes. They tried to convince you that Stephen Avery was guilty, didn't they? Yes. Blaine Dassey could wind up contradicting the testimony of his own brother. Bobby Dassey testified the afternoon of October 31st, 2005. It was around 2.30 when he saw Teresa Halbach walk up to Stephen Avery's trailer. There, and the other person of interest now is this Bobby Dassey. Yeah, that they were talking about in the tent, so. The DCI agents need some information for uh, Scott Kotick. Okay, what do they need on him? Uh, everything we got. Right, address, date of birth. GP. Yeah. Got your case, huh? We got her. Cool. Man, oh man, we've been waiting for this all day. Cool. Right, uh, you found, uh, Bones Bottom and board. body parts? Yes, a lot more. Now, they have not said yet if those remains are that of 25-year-old Teresa Halbach, but the Calumet County Sheriff will say Halbach's disappearance is now a homicide investigation. The analysis of these items is being conducted to uh, determine the identity. State troopers are still looking for more evidence, including the materials used to start the fire that burned up the body. I mean, don't let me fool you. I, I'm trying to stay as strong as I can, but it, it hurts. Uh, everything hurts. Uh. for joining us. We first told you about the settlement tonight at 5. Stephen Avery and his attorneys will get $400,000 from the lawsuit he filed in October of 2004. Sarah Thompson live in the newsroom with more on this story. Sarah. Now, Avery filed that lawsuit a year and a half ago after being wrongly convicted for a 1985 rape and spending 18 years in prison for it. He was released. Of course, now he is in prison awaiting a trial for the murder of Teresa Halbach. I'm just going to come up and ask you, who shot her in the head? He did. Why didn't you tell us that? Because I couldn't think of it. Now you remember it? Tell us about that then. Brendan says that he knocks at least three times and has to wait until the person he knows as his uncle, uh, who is partially dressed, who is full of sweat, opens the door and greets his 16-year-old nephew. Everything I hear, it's just surreal. I, I don't believe it, but, um, but I have to believe it, and I have to accept it. We'll, we'll make sure that he'll, he'll never get out of jail, and that's what we're hoping for. Mike was referring to Stephen Avery there. Now, we asked him if he ever thought anybody besides Avery was involved in his sister's death. He says the family had suspicions all along someone else might be involved, and now that the sheriff has told them that is the truth, the family says they are now having to just accept that. Stephen Avery says these guys had it out for me. This was the perfect opportunity for them to have access to my trailer, plant the key. I never absolutely saw that. Uh, we didn't try to manipulate uh, Brendan. We tried to get at the truth. We definitely have a long lives ahead of all of us to look forward to and we you know we we have long after lives to look forward to as well with Teresa. We're a very strong family. During her emotional outburst, the same Manitowoc County deputies who helped send her son to prison tell Barbara Dassey to go home. Then she breaks down behind the wheel. Kelsey. Hey, 
Hey, Paul. What's up? Uh, did you hear? There are human bones that we found? I heard about some of them, yes. Yep, okay. Uh, we got another pile that we found. Okay. Going in, and our crime scene has now expanded by about two miles. Uh, what we're looking at doing is trying to find an oil. are not human the state cannot credibly argue that it returned animal bones to the Hallbach family for burial or cremation that's a quote from Kathleen Zellner Kathleen Zellner plans to test the intention of it was people are saying people are debating all over the united states after watching your documentary is he guilty or not what do you think um i mean my personal opinion yes. is that the state did not mean its burden either in stephen avery's case or brendan dassey's case so i would say in my opinion not guilty in your opinion he could be guilty but is he guilty beyond a reasonable doubt? Nothing I've seen, and I've seen a lot of stuff. Nothing I've seen has convinced me of that. I selected the Avery case because I think that there was very blatant police misconduct in planning evidence. They were viewed, particularly Stephen, as being dispensable. It, certainly, the whole case revolves around the fact he'd brought a civil rights case. And I think that's one of the most important developments in all of it. It established Moira and Laura as two passionate new voices in filmmaking. The story is not over. So we're here with the creators of Making a Murder. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you guys with us. So our first question for you is the obvious one. What was your five word speech and how'd you come up with it? So our speech was the story is not over. And like the title, it has many meanings. Everything is active. Things are coming to light every day. So, you know, it's real life. It goes on. <laughs>